A long time ago in the small village of Umofia, a village deep in the heart of Igbo land, lived a young woman named Adana. She was known throughout the village for her beauty, kindness, and the love she shared with her husband Ikenna. The two had been inseparable since childhood, their bond growing stronger with each passing year until they finally married in a joyous ceremony that lasted seven days and seven nights. Ikenna was a skilled hunter, providing for his family and earning respect from the village elders. Adana kept their mother's compound immaculate, tending to their small farm and preparing delicious meals that filled the air with enticing aromas. They lived a simple but happy life, their love for each other evident in every glance and tender touch. For years, they tried to conceive a child, praying to the gods and seeking the wisdom of the village Dibia. Their efforts were finally rewarded when Adana's belly began to swell with new life. The couple's joy knew no bounds and they eagerly anticipated the arrival of their firstborn. But fate can be cruel and the gods sometimes taste the strength of mortal heart. One fatal morning, as the Amatan wind wiped through the village, Ikenna set out on a hunting expedition with his fellow hunters. Adana watched him go with a heavy heart, an inexplicable sense of dread settling in her stomach. She shook off the feeling, attributing it to the changes in her body as her child grew within her. Days passed and Ikenna did not return. The other hunters came back with somber faces and heavy hearts bearing news that shattered Adana's world. Ikenna had been killed by a wounded leopard. His body lived in the dense forest, where even the bravest men feared to tread. Adana's anguished cries echoed through the village, a grief so palpable that it seemed to dim the very sun. The villagers mourned with her, for Ikenna had been loved by all. But as the days turned into weeks and weeks to months, Adana found herself facing a future she had never imagined as a pregnant widow. The challenges she faced were immense. In their culture, a widow was often seen as cause, especially one who had not yet born a child. Some whispered that she had brought misfortune upon her husband, while others suggested that the child she carried was a bad omen. As tension was toughened around her, Ikenna's friend Obi asked that she marry him so that he can redeem the child. In their culture, when a husband dies and the wife is pregnant, the closest person from the husband's family or his best friend has the right to take over his wife if he so pleases. This will be the ritual to change the belief that the child is cursed. Adana wasn't desperate for another man. She was committed to remain unmarried to honor her late husband. Obi tried all he could to win Adana's love. He brought gifts, money, and sweet words which he believed would convince her to accept him. But it seemed his effort wasn't that convincing enough. Months passed. Adana's in-law, once warm and welcoming, turned cold and distant. He blamed her for their son's death, convinced that her inability to conceive earlier had angered the gods. 
they demanded she perform the traditional widowhood rites, shaving her head, wearing only black, and remaining in seclusion for months. Accepting to perform this rite would simply mean that she had accepted that the baby is caused and should be taken to the evil forest for sacrifice. They knew this part of the tradition, but the younger generation wasn't aware of it because such a scenario never occurred. But Adana found strength in her unborn child. Each kick and movement reminded her of Ikena's love, giving her the courage to face his day. She refused to shave her head or wear black, arguing that her child deserved to enter the world surrounded by life and color, not darkness and mourning. Her defiance drew both admiration and scorn from the villagers. Some women secretly supported her, bringing food and offering companionship during the long, lonely night. Others shunned her, crossing to the other side of the path when they saw her approaching. As her belly grew, so did Adana's determination. She tended to her farm with fierce dedication, determined to provide for her child just as Ikena would have done. She spoke to her unborn baby about their father, describing his bravery, his kindness, and the depth of their love. On a fateful morning, the villagers gathered around Adana's compound and chanted in anger, Perform the rituals or leave our community. We will not allow you to pet your evil baby in this land. Some chanted, We like it as our land is fertile and people are healthy. Our fishermen and hunters are happy with their catch. There is peace everywhere. Please don't invoke the wrath of the cause upon us. Leave us. The group leader stepped out and said, You have heard the decision of our people. Because you are one of us, we will be solved a bit with you. You have seven market days to leave this land. If we come back after seven market days and find you here, we will burn down your heart before disgracing you out of our land. Adana was afraid this time and wonder what will happen if she didn't leave the village. I cannot let go of my baby. This is the only thing that will remind me of my late husband. He will be exactly as brave as he was. I can feel it. She hurriedly packed her important things she would need and left. When the pains of labor finally came, Adana faced them alone. The village midwife, torn between tradition and compassion, arrived just in time to help deliver a healthy baby boy. As Adana held her son for the first time, she saw Ikena's eyes looking back at her, and she wept tears of both joy and sorrow. She named the boy Nkemjika meaning what I have is greater. For in him, she saw not just the memory of her beloved Ikena, but the promise of a future filled with love and hope. The birth of Nkemjika marked a turning point. The birth of the boy was both judgment and reward. Ubi was dressing his meat when a heavy thunder struck all of a sudden, his world became dark and he couldn't see. He started lamenting, Why can't I get what I want? I am a renowned hunter in this village, yet I struggle to find love. As he was lamenting and struggling to find his way, the villagers gathered and listened 
as he confessed to them. I was jealous of my friend Ikena. I felt he was more blessed than I am. He caught better animals than I did, married a beautiful wife who loved him so much, and I went to the Dibia to stop them from having children. When I learned that he was expecting his baby, I was intimidated. I saw that it would make him earn more respect and admiration than I am. I lured him into secret and shot him with my arrow. I killed Ikena because of jealousy. I wanted to take over his wife and his child, but she rejected me. I mobilized the villagers to send her out of the village after I persuaded Ikena's family to force her to perform the rite, which would have ended her baby's life. The villagers were all shocked that Obi could do all this to his best friend, and they pitied Adana for how they treated her. Those who stood by her rejoiced that they did the right thing, and they hurriedly went in search of Adana and her baby. Adana was brought back to the village, and the villagers flooded her compound to apologize to her and to donate items to her and her baby. Slowly, the village began to see Adana not as a cursed widow, but as a strong mother fighting against impossible odds. Her in-law, upon seeing their grandson's face, so like their lost sons, felt their heart soften. Years passed and Adana raised Ngemjika with stories of his father's bravery and the love that had brought him into the world. The boy grew strong and kind with Ikena's love and Adana's determination. Together, mother and son became a symbol of resilience in Umofia. Adana never remarried. Her heart forever belonging to Ikena, but she found a different kind of love in her son, in the community that slowly embraced her and in herself. She became known as a wise woman, sought out for advice by young and old alike. A story was told around evening fires, a testament to the strength of a woman's love and the power of hope in the face of despair. So, in the heart of Igbo land, the tale of the pregnant widow became legend, a story of love that transcended death of a mother's courage and of a community's journey from judgment to acceptance. Adana and Ngemjika's life save as a reminder that even in the darkest times, new life and new beginning can emerge as constant and life-giving as the mighty river Niger flowing through the ancestral lands. What have you learned from this story? Let us know what you think about it in the comment section. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel to have access to more of our stories. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.